All right, YouTube, it's been almost a decade of work. And at last, sickness and hell rears its ugly head and fills the world with insanity. It is at last done, and it is available, and it's also quite beautiful. Uh, cover art by the very talented Eli Fisteris, uh, which is a lot better than anything, let's face it, that I could have concocted for the cover art. Uh, the front art is cropped. The full picture is, of course, in the uh, front of the actual interior. Uh, this work is insane. It's degenerate. It's filled with lunacy, Satanism, devil worship, Satan's penis, um, and many more uh, horrifying things. It's filled with grotesquerie, dripping, blood-drenched descriptions of the most horrific acts that you can possibly think of, mixed with a little bit of dark satire and gallows humor. I wanted to make it a little bit funnier, actually, uh, honestly, a little bit more lighthearted, but I think the average person would take one look at the so-called humor in this work, probably get disgusted by it. Good, that's kind of the point. Uh, I also decided to keep the plot loose. That is, I had to call back the material a bit to create a plot, but I didn't want to have the plot be the central focus. I wanted the descriptions to be the central focus, the descriptions of individuals, settings, and, and acts, uh, and their results, so forth. And that was sort of what I got into with the original writing of Sickness and Hell. Now this work is demonically inspired or at the very least, spiritually inspired. It was set off, uh, I started submitting what would become Sickness and Hell's early chapters, actually, when I was in advanced placement English back in high school in, in my senior year. And that was caused, I had a dream, actually, that involved eating a dehydrated fetus and, and so forth. I've written and spoken about this before. This is my penultimate work. This is my masterpiece. It is the first work that I ever laid my hands to, of any substantial length. The first thing that I did uh, that went beyond just doing it for school projects or something like that. This is the first book, technically speaking, that I wrote. It's just been a long time since the original material was penned. I had to edit everything together. Uh, I, I ended up losing some of the source files at one point. Uh, I shelved the project for several years fairly recently and only lately got back to work on it. Uh, it's been a long time coming and long deserved uh, because this work deserves to be heard in the world. It will probably sicken you. If you're into horror, you'll like it. If you're into splatterpunk, you'll like it even more. If you're into dystopian literature or gallows humor or dark satire, you're going to love it. Um, this book is geared towards more than one core audience as opposed to, we would think of standard horror writing, uh, where it's held back to maybe an R rating for the most part to to apply itself to a larger overall audience. I didn't do that. I wanted it to be full throttle. And I decided it isn't enough just to be descriptive when regarding somebody getting chopped into pieces or somebody, you know, pooping out their innards or something like that. It isn't enough. You have to go beyond that into the realm of complete lunacy. You have to have an appreciation that goes far deeper for not just darkness, but the most pure, degenerate, vile filth that you can possibly dig out of your mind. And if you can do that successfully, then you have something that's really a winner. And that's what sickness and hell is. It is the ultimate grueling experience. And it's just one part of what's eventually going to be at least a trilogy of work, because I called the material down. There's so much more plot there, uh, it'll be easy to create two more solid works from it. And that's really what I want to do now. So this is going to be the most overamped horror, the most insane material. The next one, I'm going to slim down the plot even more, and I'm just going to throw in such random acts of degeneracy, violence, sexual depravity, and insanity that it'll make your mind spin. I caused one of my fellow schoolmates in my senior year with, I believe, chapter 14, because I had begun to write uh, this material outside of school. Chapter 14, I believe, made him queasy, and I think chapter 15 actually made him gurgle a little bit because he was trying to hold back his vomit. That's how sickening it really is. Um, so if you're into that sort of stuff, you're going to love sickness in hell. By the way, Morbid Stories is still available. For anyone new to my channel that's into that sort of literature, Morbid Stories has been available for some time now. Again, <laughs> sold more copies than I ever expected. I don't even understand uh, how I can piece together this many people that are into that kind of literature, but they're finding it somehow. Um, but Sickness and Hell is more, it's not short stories, it's an actual novel. 
along those same lines. I'm very proud to release it. Uh, I'm even happier that the cover art doesn't look like my standard cover art, which is pretty generic. It's well ordered, it looks good, but it's not necessarily the most stylistically developed cover art that you could get. This is. Uh, it looks good, and the pages are just filled uh, flush from end to end with things. You won't even believe the ending if I told you, so I'll just leave it at that. And if you're interested, again, link in the description, check it out. Uh, if that's your kind of literature, I think you'll have a deep, deep appreciation for the kind of madness that I can pull out of my head. That's about all. Peace out.